Good day mga kaguro! Welcome back to our channel. Maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga sumusuporta sa ating YouTube channel. Pati na rin po sa inyong nag-follow na sa ating Facebook page. Kung hindi nyo pa po yan nagagawa, paki-follow din po ng ating Facebook page. And also, please do subscribe to our videos here to our YouTube channel. At kung maaari lamang po ay ishare nyo ang ating YouTube channel at ang ating Facebook page para mas marami pa po tayong matulungang mga magtitake ng let. Today's topic is the Code of Ethics for Professional Teachers. Meron po akong sample na 20 items at akin din po i-discuss kung ano po yung tamang sagot sa ating mga questions. But before that, again, please hit subscribe, like this video, and hit that bell notification. Marami po sa inyong nagtatanong kung paano nyo po malalaman kung kailan ang susunod na live stream or kailan po lalabas ang susunod naming video. So kung maaari lamang po ay hit nyo po yung bell na nasa gilid po ng subscribe button pagkatapos nyo po mag-subscribe sa atin ay i-click nyo po yung bell at i-choose nyo po ang option na all para ma-notify po kayo ng lahat ng mga new videos, new live streams that we are going to have in this channel. So again po, please, I request all of you to please follow us on Facebook. We already have 6,000 plus followers on Facebook, but we are still needing around 4,000 bago po tayo ma-monetize sa ating Facebook page. So make sure that you also follow us on Facebook, and also please do make sure that you see the correct logo. Marami pong gurong Pinoy na nasa Facebook as pages. So make sure po na tamang guru Pinoy ang pina-follow nyo kung ano po yung nakikita nyong video dito at anong mga materials, eh meron din po tayo sa ating Facebook page. Another request that I have is that please don't skip ads, okay? Do not skip po yung mga ads na nakikita nyo. Pag meron po tayong ads sa ating video, please don't skip it. This is another way for you to help us. And of course, don't abandon the video. Ang ibig sabihin po lamang nito ay tapusin nyo pong panoorin yung video from the start until the end. Because if you don't finish the video and also you skip ads, this is going to affect our rating po in our YouTube channel. Okay, so make sure that you don't skip ads and that you don't abandon the video. Please watch it from start to end. Sigurado po ako marami kayong matututunan from start to end of our video. Alright, now we go to the different let questions that we have here. Question number one, choose the best measure which a school official may result in case a subordinate hired by a previous official who is without necessary definite written contract specifying the terms and conditions which the subordinate is to work. Okay, what will you do if you are the school official now and then there is a subordinate, merong teacher, who was hired by a previous official and that teacher has no contract? Okay, what will you do? Is it letter A? Call the subordinate in his private office and inquire about his relationship with the previous official who hired him. Letter B, get his service record and performance rating and promote him if meritorious. Letter C, recommend for dismissal the subordinate without a definite written contract. Or letter D, have a definite written contract be made specifying the terms and conditions under which the subordinate is to work. Okay, which one do you think is the correct answer? Should you call him, talk to him about about his relationship with the previous official who hired him. Tingnan nyo yung kanyang service record at i-promote mo siya. I-dismiss mo siya dahil wala siyang written contract or is it letter D, you make a written contract for him specifying the terms and conditions under which he should work. Okay, correct answer here would be letter D. Have a definite written contract be made specifying the terms and conditions under which the subordinate is to work. Alright, we proceed to question number two. It is often very difficult for the parents of a mental retarded child to accept their child's retardation. A psychologist made a complete diagnostic study of the case. She was called upon to interpret the findings to the parent. Which of the following will she do to meet the parent's resistant attitude? Alright, so ano nga bang dapat mong gawin? So merong parent, very difficult for him or her to accept that the child is mental retarded. Pero merong psychologist at yung psychologist, i.e. explain sa kanya lahat ng findings. So, ano kailangan gawin ng psychologist to meet the parent's resistant attitude? 
I'll explain that the situation was thorough and objective and that reality must be accepted no matter how unpleasant. Let her be acknowledging how the parents might feel and attempting to alleviate such feelings of guilt that may be present by suggesting things the parents can do to help the child. Reassuring the parent that many retarded children have compensatory talents that many normal children don't have. Letter D, reassuring the parent that the medical profession has recently embarked on a promising program of research that may discover means of improving the child's condition. Okay, explain mo ba na ang sitwasyon ay naging thorough, naging objective, walang bias. Letter B, kailangan mo bang i-acknowledge, kailangan mong uh, ma-feel din na meron siyang feelings of guilt at pwede mong isuggest sa kanya kung anong maaari niyang gawin para matulungan niya yung kanyang anak. Letter C, i-reassure mo siya na maraming mga retarded children ang merong mga kakaibang talent na wala ang mga normal na kids. Letter D, i-reassure mo yung parent na yung mga medical profession ngayon ay maraming programs of research at maaaring ma-improve nito ang kondisyon ng kanyang anak. Okay, ang pinaka-correct na answer po natin dito, the best answer that we can have here is letter B. Because according nga to the code of conduct natin, we should feel with the parent. Okay, so we should acknowledge how the parents might feel and attempt to alleviate such feelings of guilt that may be present by suggesting things that parents or the parents can do to help the child. Question number three. Which of the following will you do if a parent of one of your failing pupils asks you to tutor her daughter in consideration of a certain amount of money which you badly need? Okay, I've already discussed this a while ago. Is it letter A, direct the parent to another teacher but ask for a commission? Accept the offer but do the tutoring at home. Letter C, direct the parent to another teacher for tutoring. Or letter D, accept the offer with a discount. Okay, so again, I told you a while ago, bawal po sa ating mag-tutor ng sarili nating estudyante. The correct answer is, letter C, direct the parent to another teacher for tutoring. Number four, what relationship between a teacher and a student was violated when Mr. Rama carefully examined the damage done to a newly bought hammer, then attend to Ryan, one of the boys in his carpentry class, who slipped and fell from the ladder while repairing the roof of their shop? Okay, so nahulog si Ryan dahil nire-repair niya ang bubong ng kanilang shop, ng kanilang carpentry shop. Pagkatapos ay tiningnan ni Mr. Rama yung damage na nangyari sa martilyo imbis na si Ryan ang kanyang unahin. Okay, so what do you think is the correct answer? Letter A, cooperation between students and teachers should be developed for harmonious relationship. Letter B, the welfare of the pupil and student should be the first and foremost concern of the teacher. Letter C, it is the duty of the teacher to take good care of all school properties and equipment. Letter D, there should be a good harmonious relationship between teachers and students. Okay, of course, the correct answer here would be letter B. The welfare of the pupil or student should be the first and foremost concern of the teacher. So, wag pong ha uunahin ang martilyo. Unahin po muna natin ang ating estudyante. Number five, what provision in the Code of Ethical Standards does sickly Miss Miranda violate when she goes to school even late and not feeling well? So, ano bang na-violate niyang Code of conduct natin or code of ethical standards. Is it letter A? Every teacher must sincerely believe in and endeavor to help carry out the declared policy of the state. Num uh, letter B, devotion to duty, honesty, and punctuality in the performance of one's duty. Letter C, every teacher must be physically, mentally, and morally fit to teach. Letter D, teachers may vote and exercise their constitutional rights, but may not use their position to influence other people. The correct answer po here would be letter C, every teacher must be physically, mentally, and morally fit to teach. Paano natin magagampanan ang ating role, ang ating responsibilities towards the state, towards our teacher, uh, our co-teachers, our students, the parents, the community, if hindi tayo fit, if hindi tayo healthy. So sabi ko nga, bawal magkasakit ang mga guro. Number six, teachers are tasked with so many things to do aside from teaching. Sometimes these tasks adversely affect their teaching. Does this mean that teachers should be only preoccupied with teaching? Dapat ba ay nagtuturo ka lamang? Wala ka ng ibang ginagawa? Is it letter A? Yes. If they are given other assignments, justice demands that they be properly compensated. Dapat ay binabayaran ka sa ibang pagginagawa. Letter B? No. Because every teacher is expected to provide leadership and initiative in activities for the betterment of communities. 
Letter C, yes, because other community leaders, not teachers, are tasked to lead in community activities. Or letter D, yes, because teaching is enough full-time job. Marami na tayong ginagawa bilang guro. Hindi na natin pwedeng tanggapin pa kung anong task ang ibigay sa atin. The correct answer, of course, here would be letter B, no, because every teacher is expected to provide leadership and initiative in activities for the betterment of our community. So bilang guro, dapat e marunong ka mag-manage ng time mo, mag-prioritize kung anong dapat mong unahin. So of course, bear in mind that the students are first are still the first of your priorities. Number seven, Mrs. Ann Rosses does not want her student named Jomel to be the highest honor awardee because she prefers Lawrence, another student, to get the recognition. In order to ensure that Lawrence will get the highest honor award, she gave Jomel low grades in recitation and in performance tasks. Is it right to give Jomel low grades just to make Lawrence the awardee? Okay, so ayon ni Miss Ann Rosses na si Jomel ang maging highest honor awardee. Gusto niya si Lawrence. So, ginawa niya, binabaan niya yung grade ni, ni Jomel sa recitation at sa performance task. Is this the right thing to do? Letter A, yes, she is the teacher and rightfully has the right. Letter Letter B, yes, she knows what she's doing because she has academic freedom. Letter C, no, because Jomel and Loris are at par with each other. So, magkakompetensya sila. Or is it letter D, no, because as a teacher, she should be grading students in accordance with generally accepted procedures of evaluation. So, I think it's pretty obvious. The correct answer would be letter D, no, because as a teacher, she should be grading students in accordance with generally accepted procedures of evaluation and dapat she should be fair. Wala siya dapat bias. Yes, wala siya dapat favoritism. Number eight. Mr. Mario Bumawal has been teaching for the last 15 years. Every time his principal would ask him to attend a training, he would always decline and would ask another teacher to attend to attend the said training. Is this proper? Letter A, no, because every teacher shall use the teaching profession in a manner that makes it dignified means of earning a decent living. Letter B, no, because every teacher shall participate in per in professional growth. Letter C, yes, he has been in the field of teaching for 15 years, so po pwede na siyang mag-refuse. Letter D, yes, he already has an ample amount of experience. And of course, we know that the correct answer is letter B, no, because every teacher shall participate in professional growth. Okay, isa po sa mga responsibility natin to have continuous professional growth regardless of how long we have been teaching or how, how long we have been in the teaching field. Number nine, being a person known for his integrity and credibility, Mr. Alberto Artolentino has been serving as part of the Board of Election Canvassers for the past 10 years. However, in the coming elections, his mother will be running as barangay captain. Because of this, he is asked to campaign for her. Is it alright for him to campaign for his mother's candidacy? Okay lang ba na magkampanya ka dahil yung nanay mo ay tatakbong kapitan or kung sino mang uh, nasa, nasa pamilya mo or sino mang kaibigan mong tumatakbo. Is it letter A? No, because every teacher shall actively ensure that teaching is a noblest profession and shall manifest genuine enthusiasm and pride in teaching as a noble calling. Letter B? No, because every teacher shall uphold the highest possible standards of quality education and shall always be at his best in the practice of his profession. Letter C? No, because a teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, or other partisan interests. Letter D? No, because every teacher shall vote and shall exercise all other constitutional rights and responsibilities. So lahat ng choices natin ay no, pero ang tamang sagot would be letter C. No, because a teacher shall not engage in the promotion of any political, religious, or other partisan interest. So dapat e eh, non-partisan tayo, dapat e eh, wala tayong kinikilingan pagdating sa mga boto, pagdating sa eleksyon, pagdating sa religion. Number 10, Mr. Norman Isidro received a complaint from the guardian of one of his students regarding the grade of his daughter in English. Mr. Isidro listened to the complaint of the guardian with sympathy and referred it to the teacher concerned for clarification. Is Mr. Isidro right in his actions? So, dapat bang ni-refer niya sa teacher concerned ang nag-reklamo ng, um, ng guardian? Is it letter 
A. Yes, because when the best interest of the learners, the school, or the profession is at stake in any controversy, teachers shall support one another. Letter B. Yes, because a teacher shall hold inviolate all confidential information concerning associates and the school and shall not divulge to anyone documents which has not been officially released. Letter C. Yes, because it shall be the responsibility of every teacher to seek correctives for what may appear to be an unprofessional and unethical conduct of any associates. Or is it letter D, yes, because a teacher may submit to the proper authorities any justifiable criticism against an associate, preferably in writing, without violating the right of the individual concerned? Okay, the correct answer, of course, is letter A, yes, because when the best interest of the learners, the school, or the profession is at stake in any controversy, teachers shall support one another. So, dapat mo nakasuporta kayo sa isa't isa, dapat eh hindi mo gagatungan, hindi mo... Uh, pahihiyain yung sarili mong co-teacher, hindi mo siya sisiraan. Okay, number 11. Mrs. Sherry San Jose is a new teacher in Malabon National High School. The school is scheduled to hold its reading camp on a Saturday. Relative to this activity, Mrs. Josephine Elia, the school principal, advised the faculty to attend and help the organizers to facilitate the event. Mrs. San Jose, who is enrolled in a master's degree, informed the principal that she could not make it for she needs to attend her Saturday class. Is it correct not to render service on a Saturday because of her studies? Okay, so merong gaganaping activity sa inyo. Sinabi ng principal nyo na pumunta kayo Sabado po siya, you know, on Saturday because you need to help the organizers. Pero ikaw ay kumukuha ka na master's degree, okay? Nag, may, meron kayong pasok on a Saturday. So is it right for you not to render your service on a Saturday? Is it letter A, yes, because a teacher shall at all times be imbued with the spirit of professional loyalty, mutual confidence, and faith in one another, self-sacrifice for the common good, and full cooperation with colleagues. Letter B, no, because every teacher shall make it its duty to make an honest effort to understand and support the legitimate policies of the school and the administration regardless of personal feeling or private opinion and shall faithfully carry them out. Letter C, yes, because school officials, teachers, and other school personnel shall consider it their cooperative responsibility to formulate policies or introduce important changes in the system at all levels. Letter D, yes, because she is pursuing studies that will improve her efficiency, enhance the prestige of the, of the profession, and strengthen her competence, virtues, and productivity in order to be nationally and internationally competitive. Okay, correct answer would be letter D. Yes, because she is pursuing studies that will improve her efficiency. Okay, so continuing professional growth. So, pwede siyang ma-excuse sa activity on a Saturday. Number 12. Miss Rose Rosario posted her two-piece swimwear picture in her Facebook page. She received negative comments from the community and stakeholders. Miss Rosario justified that she has the right to post anything on her Facebook account since it was her personal account. Is it right for Miss Rosario to do such? Okay, so patay tayo dyan. Nag-post si ma'am ng two-piece swimwear. swimwear. Nakabikini si ma'am sa kanyang Facebook page. So marami nag-comment ng negative. Okay, so sabi ni ma'am, Facebook account ko to. I can post anything I want. Okay, so is it right for her to do such? Letter A, yes. And the learners have no right to prejudice nor discriminate her. Letter B, yes, because she recognizes that the interests and welfare of learners are of first and foremost concerns and deals justifiably and impartially with each of them. Letter C, no, because a teacher is, above all, a human being endowed with life for which it is the highest obligation to live with dignity at all times, whether in school, in the home, or elsewhere. Letter D, no, because her Facebook account might be reported and blocked. Okay, of course, we know the correct answer is letter C. No, because a teacher is a human being and she has the highest obligation to live with dignity at all times, whether in school, in the home, even in the internet, or elsewhere. Okay, number 13. Traditionally, a civic parade is held with schools participating during Independence Day. All teachers and students are required to attend. All of Mrs. Sevilla's students are excited to join. 
but she did not let them join due to personal reasons and only asked the president of the class to check the attendance of his classmates. Is the decision of Mrs. Sevilla right? Okay, so merong parade para sa Independence Day. Lahat ng students ay napaka-excited na, pero dahil sa personal na rason, hindi sila pinayagan na umate ni Mrs. Sevilla. So inatasan lamang niya yung president ng klase na mag-check ng attendance. Naging mag maganda ba, mabuti ba ang desisyon ni Mrs. Sevilla? Was it uh, was it right? Letter A, yes, because she has the safety of her students in mind. B, yes, because she doesn't want the parents to spend money for the parade costume. Letter C, no, because the students have the right to attend the parade just like all other students. Letter D, no, because she is a trustee of the cultural and educational heritage of the nation and is under obligation to transmit to learners such heritage. Of course, we know that we are a trustee of the cultural heritage of our nation. So, dapat ipinapasa natin yan sa ating mga estudyantes. So 13, the correct answer would be letter D. 14, Mrs. Ramos, a teacher at Central Elementary School, has a take-home pay of 7,500 every month. Okay, so napakababa po ang kanyang take-home pay every month. She decided to borrow money from Provincial Savings Bank with a monthly deduction of 3,500. In the same month, she also borrowed money from First Diamond Lending Company with a monthly deduction of 3,500. In the first two months, she enjoyed a take-home pay of 7,500 because the two lending institutions Institutions will deduct on the third month from the date she borrowed. Is it all right for Mrs. Ramos to borrow the amount considering that she doesn't have enough to take home when the deduction will take effect? Okay, so tama bang 7,500 lamang yung sahod mo? Meron kang babayaran na 3,500, meron ka din babayaran na 3,500, so 7,000 na lang, 500 na lang ang makukuha mong sahod. Alam nyo po ay eh, napaka-common nito sa ating mga public school teachers na no? maaari ding uh, totoo sa mga private school teachers natin. Pag marami na po tayong loan, loan dito, loan doon, huwag po nating hayaang mangyari sa atin ito. Huwag po tayong loan ng loan dahil nga eh, minsan ay eh, maasa tayo na meron tayong salary. So minsan, Yung ibang guro, magiging take-home pay na lang, 500, 1,000, 1,500, okay? So, kawawa po kayo. Alright, now, is it letter A, no? Because every teacher shall possess and actualize a full commitment and devotion to duty. Letter B, no? Because a teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to the financial matters, such as in the settlement of his debts and loans, in arranging satisfactorily his private financial affairs. Letter C, no, because every teacher shall behave with honor and dignity at all times and refrain from such activities as gambling, smoking, drunkenness, and other excesses, much less illicit relations. Letter D, no, because every teacher shall maintain harmonious and pleasant personal and official relations with other professionals, with government officials, and with the people individually or collectively. Okay, so lahat po ng choices natin ay no. Pinakatama dito would be letter B, no, because a teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to the financial matters such as in the settlement of his debts and loans in arranging satisfactorily his private financial affairs. So maaaring ngayon ay nababayaran pa niya pero eventually pag 500 na lang at hindi na siya nagkasya sa gagastusin ng kanyang pamilya ay mangungutang na si ma'am. Okay? Mas mangungutang pa siya sa ibang loans. Okay? So pag nangyari yon ay hindi na magiging maganda yung reputation niya bilang guro at sa pagbabayad na din sa kanyang mga loans. Alright, 15. Toward the end of the school year, the mother of one of the candidates for honors visits you to ask about her child's chances of graduating with honors. She brings a basket of fruits in season for you. What should you do? Is it letter A, reject the basket of fruits and tell her that you have enough at home? Letter B, accept the fruits and assure the mother that the daughter will be an honor student? Letter C, respect reject the offer and explain that you might be accused of bribery. Letter D, explain the chance of the daughter objectively and graciously accept the offer. Okay, so binigyan ka ng fruits ng um, isang parent tapos sinabi na gusto niya sana maging honor student ang kanyang anak. Would you reject the basket of fruits at sabihin sa kanya na meron ka maraming prutas sa bahay? Accept the fruit and assure the, the mother that the daughter is going to become an honor student. Respectfully reject the fruits and explain that you might be accused of bribery. Bawal sa atin. Baka ma-accuse tayo ng bribery. Letter D, explain the chance of the daughter objectively and graciously accept the offer. Okay? The correct answer answer would be letter C. Okay? So, respectfully reject the offer at sabihin na bawal po yung bribery. Hindi po pwede yung letter D natin dahil kahit na inexplain mo yung chance ng 
daughter niya objectively, ay inaccept pa rin niya yung offer. Okay? So, letter D cannot be the correct answer. Letter C is the correct answer for number 15. Uh, number 16, which of the following is not correct under the Code of Ethics for teachers regarding teacher and business? So, saan dito yung hindi tama? Letter A, no teacher shall act directly or indirectly as agent of or be financially interested in any commercial venture which furnishes textbooks and other school commodities. Letter B, a teacher has no right to engage directly or indirectly in legitimate income generation. Letter C, a teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to the financial matters, such as in the settlement of his debts and loans in arranging satisfactorily his private financial affairs. Letter D, none of the above. Sa muli po, inahanap natin yung mali. Okay, saan dito yung wala sa code of ethics natin? And that would be letter B, a teacher has no right right to engage directly or indirectly. Hindi po yan tama dahil sabi po sa ating code of conduct, the teacher has a right to engage directly or indirectly basta legal at basta hindi nakakaapekto sa kanyang pagtuturo. Okay? Hindi po po pwede yung business na may kinalaman sa libro. Okay? 17. Every teacher shall participate in the blank program of the PRC and shall pursue other studies as will improve his efficiency, prestige, and strengthen his or her competence. Ano nga ba yung tawag sa program na yon ng PRC? Is it letter A, professional enhancement? Letter B, maximizing learning competence? Letter C, continuing educational enhancement? Or letter D, continuing professional education? The correct answer, of course, would be letter D, CPE, or continuing professional education. We go to number 18. During the distribution of the report card, which of the following must be the foremost concern of a teacher? Saan dito yung pinaka-importante sa atin? Letter A, discuss the projects of the school, discuss the progress as well as the deficiencies of the students. Letter C, discuss the unsettled bill of the students. Or letter D, discuss the complaints of other teachers and classmates of the students. So saan nga ba yung dapat nating inuuna pag meron tayong report card or card distribution? The correct answer would be letter B, Discuss the progress as well as the deficiencies of the students. But of course, you should do this uh, for the section as a whole. Pag, if you are going to discuss the student individually, dapat po in private. So dapat ipaisa-isa na sa parent ng inyong estudyante. Hindi po pwedeng i-discuss mo yung kamalian, kakulangan ng isang estudyante sa lahat ng, ng parents na nandun sa yung room. Number 19. Miss Reyes is a new teacher like you. During her first few weeks in school, she felt like quitting teaching. At the end of the day, she is totally burned out. If you were in her place, from whom will you ask assistance? Is it letter A, from the principal? Okay, so nahihirapan si Miss Reyes. Letter B, from the parents. Letter C, from co-teachers. Or letter D, from pupils. So, hirap na hirap si Mrs. Reyes. Uh, gusto na niya mag-quit. At the end of the day, a burned out siya. Uh, hagardo siya. At the end of the day, if you are in her place, kung nasa kinatatayuan ka niya, ano ang gagawin mo? Kanino ka mag ask ng help? Is it from the principal, the parents, the co-teachers, or from the pupils? Of course, we can also ask the assistance of the principal, but ang pinakatamang sagot dito would be your co-teachers. Dahil syempre, pareho ng co-teachers mo, kayong dalawa ang nasa kwarto, kayong dalawa yung handle ng students, pupwedeng uh, mag-ask ka ng assistance sa co-teacher mo na nag-handle din ng the same subject, the same grade level. Pupwedeng sa principal mo, kaya lang yung principal kasi hindi naman nagtuturo. Okay? So, hindi niya alam kung anong merong problema kinakaharap ka sa loob ng klase mo. Okay? So, first-hand information, dapat ay manggaling din sa yung co-teachers. So, wag, ko, wag ka pong mahiyang manghingi ng help, wag ka pong mahiyang manghingi ng advice dahil yung mga co-teachers mo po uh, ay nandyan, marami po sila maitutulong sa inyo. Alright, last one. With regards to business, which does the Code of Ethics say about teachers? Letter A, a teacher shall maintain a good reputation with respect to debts, loans, and other financial matters. Letter B, no teacher shall be financially interested in any commercial venture involving textbooks and other school commodities where he or she can exercise official influence. Letter C, no teacher shall act as an agent of textbooks and other school commodities where he or she can exercise official influence. Letter D, a teacher may not engage in any kind of business. Okay, so with regards to our code of conduct or code of ethics, we know that the correct answer here would be letter B. No teacher shall be financially interested in any commercial venture involving textbooks and other school commodities where he or she can exercise official influence. Alright, so kung gusto nyo po ng kopya ng ating 
um, diniscuss ngayong araw ng ating 20 items na Q&A with the answer key, with the answers already, please do subscribe, hit that like button, hit that bell button, share our Facebook page, share our YouTube videos on your Facebook Tell the rest of your classmates that we can help you pass the let and this is free. Wala po kayong babayaran. And of course, make sure that you always don't skip ads in our video and that you don't abandon our videos. Complete watching all of our videos. So again, if you want a copy of what I have discussed today, uh, what I have discussed a while ago, a copy of the Code of Conduct, and also a copy of the 20 item Q&A, just write your email address in the comment box below and say... I will share Gurung Pinoy. Okay, so write your email address and say, I will share Gurung Pinoy. Alright, so sa muli ito pong inyong Gurung Pinoy na nagsasabing maliit man na butil na mga kaalaman, ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginhawaan. Maraming salamat po. Stay safe, God bless you, and stay COVID-free mga kaguro.